So, oh, the other memory from childhood that was very important to me is that um, uh, when I was a kid, I grew up in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and uh, we had a local children's show host in Albuquerque named Captain Billy, and we liked Captain Billy. We loved him. We watched him when we were eating our cereal, like me and my brother. I was eating my uh, Cocoa Pebbles, and he was eating Fruity Pebbles, which are bullshit. And <laughs> never got it, just never got the Fruity Pebbles. Like, I still resent him a little bit now, even, for putting me through watching him eat Fruity Pebbles. It's just a, but it's just like, you know, with Cocoa Pebbles, you're working towards chocolate milk. You're going to get chocolate milk. I mean, what do you get with Fruity Pebbles? It's like this gay milk. It's just gay milk. <laughs> Marin feels weird about using the word gay in that context, but he rationalizes it by thinking that Fruity Pebbles had many colors, giving it a rainbow theme, which poetically gives it a pride element. It's a stretch, but that's how, that's how Marin makes that joke okay. More later. So... How about Captain Crunch kids? What the fuck was wrong with their mouth? How could you eat that shit? Like, there were people that could eat Captain Crunch and then just, you know, I had it once and you're like, what, it just ripped my mouth up. Like, like I think all those Captain Crunch kids just became like, you know, psychopaths or football players or circus performers. I don't know. I couldn't eat it. How about these kids? I like Cheerios. No, you don't. And you really got to start pushing back now or it's going to be a long, sad life for you. <laughs> Tell them to get you a fun cereal. They can afford it. Get your own cereal. But I like Cheerios. You don't. And if you don't push back now, you're going to be a Cheerios pussy your entire life. <laughs> Metaphorically, it's just middle management for you and your Cheerios. <laughs> so anyways, Captain Billy. Is this getting through to the balcony? Are you okay up there? Do you feel alienated? <laughs> Wait, you want, you want me to deconstruct what just happened in my head and why I checked in with you? So I'm doing good down here, but somehow in my mind, my like, balcony's not with me. Like, I, I just made the decision based on nothing. I think I looked at one person up there, and I just see, the, like, a vague head, and this is what it looked like. But, but, like, I project all the time. Like, I don't know what people are thinking about. Why do I assume it's about me? I don't know what kind of life you live or what kind of day you had. That guy could be like, I hope I hid that body well. <laughs> Marin thinks he knows his fans, but I just buried someone today. <laughs> Bet you I'm the only one in here who did that. <laughs> Fucking Marin. <laughs> Anyways, Captain Billy. So here's what happens. We used to watch Captain Billy. He wore a captain hat, had a big mustache, captain's blazer. He had puppets and, you know, he showed cartoons and he'd teach us things. And we loved him. We loved Captain Billy. At that point in my life, I guess I was about seven, my father was a doctor. Uh, it's unclear what he does now. Um, <laughs> we're in touch, but I don't press him for any information because it just doesn't go anyplace good. But he was a doctor. And one day he came home from the hospital for dinner, which was rare. And he sat at the dinner table and just out of nowhere, he said, someone shot Captain Billy today. <laughs> he's at the hospital, he's in critical condition. I couldn't even wrap my brain around it. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like what, what? Why would anyone shoot Captain Billy? Dad, why? And my father, never being appropriate in his life to this day, looks at his seven-year-old son in the eyes and goes, some guy caught him screwing his wife. <laughs> And in retrospect, that is the most important lesson I learned from Captain Billy. <laughs> don't, don't do that. It's a commandment for a reason. That commandment will lead to the other one, murder. 